today we're exercising this fully restored one owner W13 Pagoda. The beauty of purchasing a car such as this, which was restored under the care of its owner rather than being restored by a vendor who knew they were going to be selling the car, is that one can afford to do it to a much higher level if you're not doing it for economic purposes. A vendor is always under the gun to turn something out and make a profit on it. Our client bought this car in 1967 and has owned it its whole life competed in events. He's entered it and won in car shows both before and after the restoration. And that restoration was done after he'd owned the car for about five decades, only putting around 100,000 miles. But then he wanted to put her back to her former glory and go back on the show circuit. She's got, I think, about 23 trophies and only 400 maintenance miles and counting since we're putting a few on today. We're going to be running around the foothills of Mount Helix in San Diego County, it's a suburb of San Diego. So our client, again, restored this car without regard to cost, knowing that none of us are on this planet forever and we're only caretakers. And he, he did not do this with any sort of economic uh, motivation. It, it was all to put the car back the way the factory intended. This brings us to the sweet spot of buying a car. This is, this is the way to buy one where a caring owner has lavished what, what some would call insane amounts of money on doing a no excuses restoration. For the buyer, they're, they're buying this car even at a quarter of a million dollars at about a $100,000 discount from the cost to restore the car. So that's, that's where the wisdom of buying someone else's treasure, which they have lavished this sort of investment on, because the market is the market. Now, from our point of view, we are in both the restoration business and the sale business. So, in a case such as this, we have a duty to look out for the interests of both the seller and the buyer. 
for the seller, the seller knows they're not going to get their investment back because of the nature of uh, doing a, a no holds barred restoration. And for the buyer, even though they realize for a car like this, they're going to pay way over what might be considered the average market. Still, to be fair, there's a balance. And just because you spend nearly $400,000 restoring something, you know, it doesn't mean it's going to sell for that much. But on the other hand, it's also not going to sell for driver money. So again, the sweet spot is buying one that's had this sort of money put into it and buying it at a discount to to what was what was spent on the car. Another benefit for the eventual buyer of this car being one that's had a full, full restoration where every nut and bolt was touched and every system rebuilt or resealed and refinished is that everything functions the way the manufacturer intended, meaning the controls are light, the shifting is precise. And that translates to, to just a wonderful driving experience. The car doing just everything it's supposed to do. People forget that these were intended to be somewhat of a sporting car, and thus they handle quite well in the twisties.
Well, let's take her back home for now. We've done about 10 maintenance miles. So we've got just 412 miles on the restoration now. <laughs>